hello everyone um, as we know that the first chapter of class 12 chemistry starts with a solution now why this chapter we have to read uh, the reason is it is a very important thing first of all the in our day-to-day -day life the, the liquid or even the solids that we came across are not pure mm. say for an example the drinks that we that we take or say for an example the alloys that we use are none of them are pure substances so in this chapter we are going to understand why these are not pure and if it is not pure what are the ingredients that they are made of so let us see what is a solution basically common idea when we are talking about a solution that we have is um, you take a, a glass of water and you use uh, you take some of amount of salt say for an example sodium chloride within it and we mix it right and it becomes a solution of sodium chloride so that is the common perception all of us are having right but uh, in true sense if we are talking about a solution then we must say the solution is a homogeneous mixture a homogeneous mixture we must understand this a homogeneous mixture what is a homogeneous mixture I am going to describe that very soon so homogeneous mixture the composition of which can be varied up to a certain extent so that is what we uh, actually define uh, the solution now let us talk about the homogeneous solution a homogeneous solution means its composition is same throughout everywhere so that we need to understand now whenever we are talking about a solution th th then the two terms that al uh, always comes into our mind is that solute plus solvent gives rise to a solution now we are going to see that what is a solute and what is a solvent now mm, talking about the solutions we used to think that uh, we take a solid and we dissolve it in a liquid that is the common way of preparation of a solution but that's not right let us uh, let us take, take uh, let us talk about air in air what happens mostly it is nitrogen and oxygen now nitrogen is almost 77 percent and 20 percent 20.60 percent of oxygen so these are homogeneously mixed and air is a solution uh, now I uh, we used to think the solution means we take a glass of water we mix something on it that becomes a solution that's not always it is a solution but that that is not the only way to prepare or to think about a solution mm, as I have said nitrogen plus oxygen plus various components of uh, various type of gases gives rise to air which is also a solution let us talk about the alloys you mix copper with gold it becomes an alloy and that is also a solution because it is again a homogeneous mixture the composition of which can be varied up to a certain extent uh, if we talk about ethanol solution for an example you take say 25 ml of ethanol and you mix it in say for an example 200 ml of water it will if it is homogeneously mixed if the composition is same throughout then it is also going to be called as a solution now it's a liquid liquid case it's not a solid mixed in a liquid so what I mean to say is solution means the solute and the solvent can be of different physical state not necessarily solute will always be solid and solvent will always be liquid so as we can see a, a solution is always a, is nothing but a solvent plus solute and what is a solute that present in lesser quantity and solvent always present in larger quantity now along with that we must understand that the solvent determines this much this is the physical state of a solution for an example if we take NaCl solution in case of NaCl solution of course it is liquid we are mixing NaCl solid plus water in liquid form but the ultimate result whenever we form the solution it is always in liquid form that means what is present in the larger quantity the solvent which is water that is actually determining the physical state of the solution NaCl solution which is also liquid so that is the important thing that the solvent always determine the physical state of a solution so after defining the solution and the type of solution we must understand how do we express the concentration of a solution uh, concentration means whenever we talk about this term the concentration of a solution the things that comes into our mind is the amount of solute dissolved in a solution right uh, the quantity of solution which is true but uh, mathematically if we need to express there are various ways like the mass percentage 
like the ppm or the part per million like uh, molarity molality i think these terms you are already aware of um, a mole fraction so let us see mathematically because we have to do so many mathematics uh, numericals in this particular chapter let us see mathematically what these are mm, like means what will be their expressions uh, mathematically the mass percentage see. if we are talking about mass percentage mass percentage means it is the mass of the component in the solution divided by total mass of the solution into 100 that means suppose wa we take which is the mass of the component a and wb which is the mass of the component b then mass percentage of a that is should be equal to wa divided by wa plus wb why wa plus wb because we are already discussing about the total mass the total mass means both of these so wa plus wb into 100 the concentration of uh, solution like mass percentage very similarly there is another one is known as the volume percentage it is uh, it is very similar as i said you see the volume percentage of a volume percentage of a is nothing but it's equal to volume of a divided by volume of a plus volume of b into 100 suppose uh, let us take an example like 10 ml of ethanol is dissolved in 90 ml of water so obviously the volume percent of percentage of ethanol will be like 10 ml of ethanol that we have taken divided by a plus b that means volume of ethanol that is 10 and the volume of water that is 90 so it is uh, it is ultimately we are getting 10 percent so this is called the uh, way to find out the volume percentage it is very similar uh, like we have seen in case of mass volume percentage, percentage uh, there is another one known as parts per million <coughs> which is also expressed in ppm now it is not applicable everywhere it is only applicable here it is written you see when the solute is present in trace quantities that means when the amount of solute is very very less compared to the amount of solvent if the amount of solute is way less then only it is applicable so it is only for the special cases let us define this if i write ppm of a it should be written as it is the mass component of a divided by total mass of solution so it is similar up to now but it is to be multiplied by 10 to the power 6 now this formula we will only apply when the amount of solute that is present in a very very less quantity that is trace quantities so this is another one but uh, we can see the numericals that is given to us uh, is not mostly with uh, related to the mass percentage volume percentage molarity normality molality etc uh, ppm related numericals are comparatively lesser in related to molarity suppose it is given to us that uh, we are having uh, 100 ml that is 100 ml of solution and we are also having say for an example 2.65 gram of sodium carbonate sodium carbonate we know that it is its molar mass is 106 gram uh, obviously you can recalculate during the time of uh, examination so then what should be the molarity so i repeat is the 100 ml of solution where 2.6 gram of sodium carbonate is dissolved what is the molarity question is what is the molarity what is the molarity now first we have to find out as per the formula as you can see it is the moles of solute number of moles of solute so if we find out number of moles of Na2CO3 that means it is the given mass which is 2.65 divided by the molar mass if you calculate the value will all will be uh, i have calculated already uh, so the uh, value will be like 0 0.025 mole now you see this it is dissolved in 100 ml so in case of milliliter what we have said that we have to multiply this one by thousand 
So it is so if we calculate the molarity that is capital M, we can write that 0 0.025 divided by 100 into 1000, right? 1000 because this is in ml, so it has to be multiplied by 1000. So it should be 0 0.25. That is how we calculate the molarity of a solution. So this is a very simple example. I hope it will help you out. To understand. After molarity, the immediate one that we need to read is the molality. You see the name, molality. So it's slightly different and but in terms of uh, its formula also, we have to be very careful what actually it is. So if we have to define the molality, it will be like it is the molality of a solution is defined as the number of moles of solute dissolved per 1 kg of the solvent. That means, and by the way, it is uh, expressed in small m. So small m means it is the moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kg. So like the previous one, if we want to rewrite this, if moles of solute we write and mass of solvent, mass of solvent, if we express this one in gram, then it should be multiplied by 1000, like the previous case. So we can write down like this, it is the molality rather should be small m should be is equal to n b by w into 1000. n b is of course b means we are talking about the solute as the number of moles of solute divided by the mass of the solvent into 1000. So let us see one or two problems related to that. Suppose the question is for uh, if we take the question like this suppose the question is 2.5 gram of ethanoic acid that means we are taking 2.5 gram of CH3 CO2H and we are dissolving it in 75 gram of benzene that is C6H6. We have to calculate what is the molality. Now we know the molar mass of CH3 CO2H. Let us find it out. You will find out as 60 gram per mole. Now Mass of benzene C686, it should be 75 gram. If we calculate the molality now, if we calculate the molality of the acetic acid which is given, it should be what? It should be moles of CH3CO2H divided by we have seen earlier is the mass of the solvent in gram or the mass of the solvent in kg in case of grams we will multiply it by 1000 so if we take the mass of the solvent in case of in, in this case it is benzene which is 75 right into 1000 that means if I rewrite here it is the mass of benzene it is given in grams over here now it should be how much it is 60 but uh, you know 60 is the molar mass of the acetic acid so we need to find out what is the given moles of acetic acid so that means it is 2.5 by 60 which if you calculate it will be like 0 0.041 again I'm telling you that we have been pro uh, we, we are having 2.5 gram of acetic acid we need to find out its number of moles. The molar mass of the acetic acid is 60 gram per mole. So 2.5 by 60 we are getting 0 0.041 which is nothing but the moles of acetic acid. Now so we can put it over here like 0 0.041 divided by the mass of the benzene which is 75. Now since we are putting this value in gram we should multiply this one by 1000. So ultimately we will be getting 0. 556 five, molar. You can calculate this one. I have previously calculated just to make the video shorter. So this is how it is. We have to see the amount of the solute that is given. We need to find out its number of moles by given mass by molar mass. 
then the mass of the solvent in kg if it is directly given then fine otherwise write that in grams multiplied by 1000 you will get the molality now it is small m always so this is how we calculate the molality similarly i will advise the students to see for the similar problem this one is a mole fraction now uh, i have written already the definition as you can see it is the ratio of number of moles of one component to the total number of moles now here i need to mention that the total number of moles means i am basically talking about solute as well as solvent hmm. so present in the solution now if i want to write down like mole fraction of a component it should be equal to number of moles of the component divided by total number of moles of all components that means say for an example uh, we take suppose a and b both are there and it is giving rise to a solution suppose a is the solute and b is solvent if this is a small x x a if this is the mole fraction of a and if x b is the mole fraction of b then x a should be defined as n a that small n is nothing but the number of moles of a divided by the total mole that is n a plus n b and here also x b should be written as n b divided by n a plus n b here you can see so the mole fraction of a is nothing but the number of moles of a divided by total mole and the mole fraction of b is equal to number of moles of b divided by the total moles and of course if i take x a plus x b i have to write n a divided by n a plus n b plus n b divided by n a plus n b which is nothing but 1 that means x a plus x b should be equal to 1 or x b i can write down is 1 minus x a so this is how the relationship between the mole fractions can be defined and this is one of the way to measure the concentration of the solution and we will be observing few numericals related to that so till now we have observed uh, what is a solution uh, we have seen the way of expressing the solutions the concentration of the solutions in different ways like uh, mass percentage volume percentage ppm molarity molality uh, mole fraction now it will be my suggestion to see few numericals related to that from the NCRT book itself and one of the one or two numericals I have discussed also in the videos. Just to keep the video shorter I have not included too many numericals within the video but we will be discussing uh, some of them in the next videos.